Hello everyone, my name is Dani and welcome back to my channel Current Chapter. Today I'm here to show you all the books I got in April. So let's talk about books. So in April I went to a library book sale and I bought 14 books. So that was amazing, it was so cheap. I think one of the best things about library book sales is that all the books are so cheap so I can take a chance on a book that I wouldn't usually get to just because I wouldn't spend the money on that book or I wouldn't prioritize it but it's there, it's available, it's something that I am interested in so I think it's just amazing to get the opportunity to find new books uh, so as I said I got 14 books and also in April I got 3 more books besides those 14 so I'm gonna show all of them to you and that this is in no particular order just made a pile here and I'm just gonna grab them as I go. The first book I have here is Stargirl by Jerry Spinelli. Uh, I already read this book in April for the Owls Readathon. It's about a boy who's in high school and this new girl uh, starts school there and she's really different from everyone else. So it's about it's a book about defying stereotypes. Uh, I liked that. It wasn't my favorite book. It wasn't bad. It's just okay. I'm gonna talk about it more in my wrap up, but there you go. This was the cheapest book and the sale, it was 50 cents, so it was totally worth it. The next one I have here is The, Ob the Observatory Mentions by Edward Carey, and I have no idea what this book is about. It was totally a cover by it's so cool how the cover and the back of the book are drawn as if it was chalk and my husband and I thought it was really interesting just because of that we have no idea if you have read this let me know uh, I read in the back here and it doesn't say much just a second so I just reread the back of the book because I didn't remember what this was about and it's about a boy who lives in this mansion they call Observatory Mansion. Um, I already forgot. And he has a room in this apartment where he collects all the things that he steals. All the people that live there are misfits. Um, and he steals things and he keeps this in this room. And one day a new person moves to this house and just things go from there. Um, I have no idea what this is like. If you have read this, let me know. Um, I would love to get some thoughts on it. Or maybe not. Maybe if you just think I should just read it without knowing anything. Also let me know. It, it's a really cool book. So that's why we got it. Next we have Pattern Recognition by Will and Gibson. I have never read William Gibson before, I'm interested in reading Neuromancer and some of his other books, I had never heard of this one before, but it says here that it's his best book since Neuromancer and I know I've heard so much, so many good things about it, so I, I was interested <laughs> and I don't know, I also don't know much about it, it's a series also, a trilogy or something, and it seems really cool, it's sci-fi. Then we have Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Levithan. I have never read any David Levithan and the only John Green I've read was The Fault in Our Stars a really long time ago and it was weird because I didn't like the story but I loved his writing so I wanted to read for his writing but I don't tend to enjoy YA romances, YA contemporaries so that's why I didn't like it, it's just my thing, it's just my taste in books. So I wanted a book, I wanted to read more John Green but not romance, so this was recommended to me and when I found it there, that was my, my opportunity to buy it. It's written by these two authors and it's about two boys who meet one night and they're both called Will, Will Grayson and that's what leads the story from what I know. Uh, let me know if you've read it, if you recommend, and if you also have any other recommendations from John Green that are not romances or just books that are written like what John Green writes, because I really like his writing, but I don't like YA romances, so that's where we're at. 
Then we have A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. This cover is also super cute. Uh, this was also a cover by... I mean, all these books, I had a bigger pile of books than this during the book sale. And I took some of the books out of the pile and I didn't buy them. So it wasn't simply a cover buy for any of these. I actually looked them up on Goodreads. And I didn't care much about the ratings, just I read the story and a feel of the reviews just to see what they were about. But this was one that was kind of interesting to me. I know it's a sci-fi story that people travel between worlds or cities or dimensions or something. Uh, I know since I bought it that I heavily focuses on the romance, so I will take that in mind going this, into this book. But it was something I was interested in. It's not I'm not expecting too much of it, so that could be a good thing. Uh, let me know if you have read this and what you think. Then we have The Nowhere Child by Christian White. This is a thriller. It's about a girl who disappears, is kidnapped when she was, she was two years old. And it tells a story when she's older and she's realizing that she's the girl who disappeared. And it was a famous thing at the time, from what I can tell. And she goes back to meet her real parents and try to figure out what happened. I don't know if that's already telling too much. That's what it says on the book. So... This is what I know about it. I love thrillers and I haven't heard anyone talking about this. So that made me want to buy it because when I see a lot of reviews about a thriller, I kind of go into expecting something already. So it's good to have a thriller that you don't know anything about. Uh, so this one is one of those. I also got Wicked, uh, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West by Gregory Maguire. I have watched the play. I'm not sure if it's directly related, uh, I, I would assume it is, and I really loved it, I really like The Wizard of Oz, although it's been a really long time since I read it, I should reread it, it's really cool. Um, and this is a story about the Wicked Witch of the West, which is the villain in The Wizard of Oz, and this is kind of her backstory, saying how she became that way, and that not everyone is all bad. It's, the, the play was really awesome, the songs are amazing. And I really recommend it if you have the opportunity to go. And I'm really curious to read a book. Then I have one that this was... I don't know what's going to happen with this book. But it's called Cult X. It's by Fuminori Nakamura. I probably said that wrong. And this was actually a cover by... This is like hollow. And it's like a lot of horror things happening here. I got this book because right by the time when we went to the sale, we were talking about, I don't know, a TV show or something that had a cult in it, and we just thought it was really interesting how cults work, especially in literature, because in real life they're simply scary. Um, and I found this book and I thought it was really interesting. It's Japanese, it's translated, translated by Kalao Aomoni, probably also saying that wrong. And this, this actually has a really bad rating on Goodreads, but we were just super interested to see what it's all about. I, I don't know. It's, I, I, let me know if you read it, if you heard about it. I've never heard about this book before, and I just thought it was really cool. The, all the drawings. I don't know if you can see specific things, but it's all really creepy. And it's hollow. This was totally a cover buy. And next we have Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. Uh, this is a thriller story, but it's about a writer who writes thriller stories. So it's about a story, it's a story within a story, which is something I think it's very interesting. And this is recommended by one of my best friends. Uh, it's one of her favorite books, and I'm really interested in reading it because I really trust her taste. Uh, it has deckled edges, I don't know, most people don't like it, but I think they're okay. I don't mind them, and it's really cool. I was really happy to find this, we're so cheap. Then we have The Twelve by Justin Crowning. It's second book in the, in the Passage series. Uh, I have The Passage, I have not read it yet. It's in Brazil, in my mom's house. So as soon as she comes to visit, this one 
will be one of the, the priorities for her to bring. But yeah, this is second one, and it, the, the series about vampires, I don't know exactly uh, the plot, I don't remember, and I'm not gonna read the plot in this one because it might have spoilers. But this one was signed, so I just thought it's really cheap. I'm probably gonna like because of the vampires, and might as well get a cheap hardcover signed edition of a really cool book. And then we have Inferno by Dan Brown. I have read two of his books before and I really enjoy them. My husband has all of them except for Inferno. This is the only one he doesn't have yet. So we bought it. We don't have any of the books here, but they exist. They're in Brazil. We own them. Uh, and this one didn't have. And it's also really pretty hardcover for like $3. Next we have Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Uh, this is also a thriller. I'm really excited to read this, although I have heard a lot about it. I've heard good and bad things about it. And it's about a woman whose child disappears and after a long time she meets a man who has a daughter who looks a lot like her child. Um, yeah, that's all I know about it. It feels like it's already too much to know about it, but that's what's written here, so we're gonna have to go with it. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I might read this soon, because I'm in a thriller mood lately, so excited. And then we have this tiny book, which is a poetry collection called Barbed Liars, Canadian Venomous Verse, and the foreword is by Margaret Atwood, which was what made me want to buy it. I thought it was really cool to have a book of poetry that's all from Canada. I just moved here, so I thought it was really cool to have. Uh, it's really old. Uh, I think it's from the 90s, and I've read some reviews that said it didn't age well, and I probably won't understand anything in it because it's all about references all the time of what was happening in Canada. Which I won't know, but I thought it was cool, and at least I'll understand the foreword. Maybe. I'll let you know when I read it. And lastly, from the book sale, I have The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. So I read uh, A Monster Calls in March by Patrick Ness, and I loved it so much. And I heard nothing but great things about this book. It's about... Uh, place, a town where everyone hears everyone else's thoughts uh, and someone is trying to hide something, but how can they hide something if everyone is hearing your thoughts? This is being made into a movie, I saw that on Patrick Ness' Instagram, and it stars Tom Holland, who makes Spider-Man, so I'm really excited to read this before I see the movie. I think the movie is called Chaos Walking, which is the name of this trilogy. I don't know if the movie is going to be the whole trilogy, so if anyone knows, let me know if I should read the whole trilogy before I watch the movie or if just this one is okay. But yeah, I'm really excited to read this book. And those were the 14 books I got in the library book sale. Uh, as I said, I got three more books. One of them was in another book sale. I went to this book sale and it was mostly uh, textbooks, so I didn't find a lot, a lot of things that I was interested in. But I did find A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libra Bray. I have not read any Libra Bray before. I'm very interested in reading The Diviners. But this one they had, and this is another one that I've heard really cool things about. Uh, it's about a girl who's, who loses her parents, and she's, she gets taken to London, and she has these visions of the future, I think. Yeah, she has these visions of the future. And she's, she was followed by a guy who tells her that she shouldn't give in to those visions. But apparently she does, because a lot of supernatural things start happening. It's a very interesting premise. And I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but I'm interested in reading it. I've heard awesome things about this book. So let's see. And then we went to Indigo, and those were the books I bought full price. Uh, so we got... Crown of Feathers by Nikki Valperto. Uh, the dust jacket is on the bookshelf. I'm reading this now. I'm actually enjoying this a lot. This is a fantasy about a world where Phoenix Riders... 
where Phoenix Riders were a thing in the past, but they kind of sided with the wrong person and they were chosen and mostly all killed uh, with their, along with their phoenixes. And there, now there are these two sisters who are also, also have animal magic in them and they also want to be phoenix riders and they kind of yeah, go from there. So I'm hoping to finish this soon. Uh, and also we got Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett because the show is coming, out, coming up on Amazon and you really want to, want to watch it. My husband is reading it now, so I don't have it here with me, but I'll have the cover here. Uh, it's about uh, good and bad, about the demon and an angel, and Armageddon happened, and they have to deal with that. I also don't want to know much more than this. I have not watched any trailers for the show because I just want to go into a blind. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to read that. Uh, I'm also reading that for another project that I'm going to have another video talking about it. And that's it! Those are all the books that I got in April. Uh, you probably saw them in my bookshelf before because I got them in the beginning of the month. But yeah, let me know if you've read any of this. Let me know if you have uh, any thoughts on any of these books. If you're interested in buddy reading any of these, I would love to do that with you. So let me know and do subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to hear my thoughts on these books after I read them. And remember to like. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a while since I filmed. I'm glad to be back. I'm having so much fun. And thank you so much for watching until now. Bye.